Hey guys, hey, welcome to another, wait for it, dog vlog, yeah, hi, hi. <laughs> and in today's video, I am going to give you my tips and advice on picking a kibble for your dog, yeah. All right, so let's just jump into this video uh, right me. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. If you are new here, welcome. I'm so damn happy that you're spending some of your time with us. Uh, click that subscribe button. If, if you like what you see here, help me on my mission to save all the damn rescue dogs. I wanna start this video off with a massive caveat. That is, I am not a veterinarian, I am not a medical professional, and I am not an expert on kibble. What I'm going to share with you today is my personal experience and my personal opinion. I have a lot of experience when it comes to pet food, the pet food industry, dogs, dog nutrition, uh, but I just, I like to give that caveat. The second major caveat of today's video is that Above anything else, I am a fresh food advocate. I have videos linked up here. You can learn all about adding fresh food to your dog's diet, raw feeding, but my number one by far, by a landslide cho choice for a dog's food is fresh food or raw dog food. If you don't know what that is, again, videos all up here already ready for you. Also linked down below, so get into those. But today's video is all about kibble. And I wanna make it super clear, while I'm not an advocate of kibble and dry food or even canned food, I understand that we all, as a pet parent, start somewhere and we all end somewhere. And it's a journey in between where we start and where we end. So wherever you are today, for whatever reason you're feeding, whatever food you're feeding, I believe that you are doing the very best that you can today. I also believe that as a pet parent and as a human being, there's always room to improve and do better. And the way that we do that is to know more. And that's kind of what I wanna help you guys today with. I wanna help you guys think about things a little differently and maybe, I don't know, maybe it could uh, lead you to a even healthier, Dog. Let's jump into the things I would look for if I was gonna be feeding my dogs a kibble diet. And it's actually very simple and very easy. The number one thing, and after I say this, you could just stop the video because this is really the, if you could only take one thing away from this video, this is like the main thing that you should think about and consider when choosing a kibble for your dog's food. And that is the carbohydrate content of the kibble. And this is so important because biologically, dogs, in my humble opinion, do not need excessive amounts of carbohydrates in their diet, especially in the form of refined and processed carbohydrates. Go find a wild dog or a wolf and go find one that thrives on a diet primarily consisting of dry, processed, refined carbohydrates. I dare you to go do that. So uh, that is why to me, finding a dry dog food that is as low in carbohydrates as possible is critical. You know, and what's interesting is that carbohydrates are not readily listed on the back of any dog food bag, which is just mind blowing because for most dog foods, that is the primary ingredient that makes up the dog food, yet it's not on the bag of food. And that's, in my opinion, driven by the fact that consumers, pet parents, are becoming more and more knowledgeable on the fact that carbs are leading to massive amounts of diseases and health conditions in dogs from cancer to diabetes to, you know, carbs fueling epilepsy. I mean, it's, it's a massive issue, but we're not talking about it from the pet food industry standpoint because that is the ingredient that makes up all of these dry foods and if the mass market was aware of the fact that dogs biologically are not thriving when fed massive amounts of carbohydrates, that could lead to a lot of profit loss to a lot of very wealthy people. Okay, but that's not what this video is about. I digress. So <laughs> number one thing you wanna look for when, when, when you're picking out a, 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 a kibble 
is the carbohydrate count. Now, since it's not listed, this is how you calculate it. It's very, very simple. You're going to flip that bag over. You're gonna look at the guaranteed analysis. There's gonna be a ton of numbers. They're gonna be in percent format, and you're gonna add all of those numbers up to get one value. That value, that number, you're then going to subtract from 100. The remaining number is your carb percent in the food. So. Um, estimated carb percent in the food. So let's say that you add up all those percentages and you get 70. So you take 70 and you subtract that from 100% and that gives you 30%. So the estimated carb value in that food is estimated 30%. And what's so interesting is when you do this for a ton of different kibbles out there, you're gonna find that most of them are very high in carb percentages, up to 50, 60% of the food is carbs. And what do carbs eventually convert into? You got it, sugar. And what does sugar lead to in both human and dogs? Inflammation. And that is a whole nother video, but that is in itself why I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of, car of carbs, true, but of kibble. A couple examples of kibbles that I've seen on the market, and I'm not saying these are good or bad, I'm just saying these are a couple examples that I've seen to be on the lower spectrum in, tar in terms of carbohydrate value, and that would be a Karna 4 seems to have pretty low carbohydrates, Origin seems to have pretty low carbs, and so does the Stella and Chewy, uh, I think it's the raw coated kibble. You guys are gonna go do the math, but I, I urge you to go into your local independent pet store. Don't go to a PetSmart Petco. Go to your local independent retailer. Go look at all the bags of the dry food, turn them around, do the math, find the one with a lower amount of carbs, and you will be one step on your way to a better kibble. A uh, couple of the things that I look for when it comes to a kibble or any dog food is sourcing. Open Farm is an example that will give you locations of where the meat is sourced from because it's so important that when possible, the proteins that are sourced for that dog food are coming from small family farms or at least family farms that are humanely raising and treating those animals. Um, animals that are treated better are generally healthier for dog food consumption. And it's important you're not getting rendered and low quality meat. So sourcing is important. Another thing to look for when it comes to kibble are the synthetics added. The way that you find out if the food has in synthetics is simply looking at the ingredient panel. And when you start seeing an endless list of ingredients that are kind of hard to pronounce, they probably added synthetics. And the reason that is tough is, you know, I personally am not confident on the regulation of those synthetics. And if there are any issues when the synthetics are being made, that can cause potentially health issues in a dog. So I'm a big fan of fewer or no synthetics as much as possible. On all of this, I do not want to leave this video without making one thing so uber clear to you, and that is, do not forget that if you're feeding a dry food, that a little bit of fresh food can go a long way with regard to your dog's health. What I mean by that is if you can only afford to feed a kibble or you're only comfortable feeding a kibble food, please, I beg of you, explore the option of adding fresh foods, meaning foods that are not processed, which all kibble is, that's what makes it shelf stable. It's cooked and processed and, Find fresh food and explore the option of adding fresh foods to your dog's kibble. Examples are lightly cooked, human safe and human grade mushrooms, raw goat milk, uh, bone broth that is made for dogs, meaning there's no seasonings added to it, no salt, of course, added to it to moisture, moisture the, the kibble. Uh, lightly sauteed broccoli has some great nutrients in it, as well as maybe some fresh fruit, a little bit of blueberry, a little bit of watermelon with the seeds removed are some great things you can add to your dog's diet to get some fresh fruit, fresh food nutrients in the food. Because remember, and this goes with the food that you feed and feed yourself. Yeah, that you feed yourself or eat yourself. When food is cooked, 
pasteurized or processed, which all kibble is, again, that's why it can sit on the shelf for months at a time, you lose significant amounts of nutrients. It's similar to you and I eating a cereal. It's it, The nutrients are cooked out. It is what it is. If you take like a bag of broccoli and you put it in the microwave for 10 minutes, you're going to lose nutrients. So I urge you to explore getting some fresh options in your dog's diet. If you're feeding kibble, huh? How ambiently, huh? Usable. Let me go ahead and do bark remark of the day. That's like my comment of the day. I'm gonna do it on one of my more recent videos. This is a good video. So here's a video I did. It's titled, My Dog Tries Avocado Fruits and Vegetables. And uh, this video gives you some great examples of fresh food items that you can add into your dog's kibble. So I, um, I'll link it right here, and it's also linked below. This comment of the day. So this uh, comment goes to Jennifer Diaz. She commented on the video, hey Rachel, this video was adorable. Such good dogs sitting on the chair. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your article on avocados. It's so annoying how one rumor gets started. I love how you dig into a myth that people have just been following year after year. This can also apply to many things in life. Love your video. I chose this comment because it is tough. It is tough to put yourself kind of out there on this platform sometimes, but I do believe that it's important that I share my experience, I share my truth. I wanna learn from you guys, I want you to learn from me. And I think the more that we know, the, the better we can do. And the final thing I wanna say at the very end is Rodney Habib, who is the dog dad AF, he is a pet nutrition blogger, has a ton of experience, does videos, 50x times better than I do. Um, first off, you should be following him and I'll have him be linked down below. But second off, he has a great video talking about um, how to look, how to choose a great kibble, and he goes into way more depth than I do. So I'll link that video up here if I can, but I'll definitely have it linked down below as well. Tell him Rachel Fasaro sent you, and I hope that you have a beautiful